A little while ago, I published a short giving advice for non-speakers of German having to write German words or names with umlauts or nest set. If for some reason you cannot type these special characters, you can replace the umlaut with an E or the est set with a double S. On no account, I said, should you just ignore the umlaut. It's not like French, where the diacritics are mostly pronunciation guides. Ignoring the umlaut is an actual spelling mistake. Well, I got a lot of comments from Germans saying just how wrong I was. Some said you can never replace the umlaut in the est set. Some said you can replace the umlaut, but not the est set. And some said that you can replace the est set, but not the umlaut. Some said that if you are going to replace the est set, you should do it with the letters S, Z. And some of you even said that it's not called the est set, it's called the Schafer's S. I mean, what did I expect? This is the internet after all. Well, the first thing to say is that this was supposed to be advice for people who do not have access to these special characters, either because the font they're using doesn't have them, or because they're not using a keyboard that has those keys. You know, non-speakers of German who, once in a lifetime, may have to write a letter to Frau Weiss in Münster. To those people saying that for the umlaut you just need to type a double quote and then the letter, I say this. That only works if you are using a Windows PC and you have installed the US International Keyboard, which most people haven't. And to those of you saying that you just need to use the alt codes, well, if you expect people to memorize seven four-digit numbers, then fine. For the capital S set, you actually have to edit the registry first, and then the alt code doesn't always work, because in some applications it opens a menu. To be fair though, if you can type these special characters, you are supposed to do so. The official spelling rules are very clear. And this is why, young Germans, your teachers will mark it as a spelling mistake if you don't. But official spelling rules are supposed to be there to help us, not to make life pointlessly inconvenient. This has been an established practice for a very long time now and is still a convention in, for example, crossword puzzles and internet domain names. Your teachers may not like it, but it is how German actually works. Where umlauts are concerned, the rule is that wherever possible you should write them as umlauts. But if it's not possible, then you should replace the umlaut sign with the letter E, which is a lot better than simply pretending it doesn't exist. Easy. The rules for the est set are a little more complicated. But first, the name. Some of you objected to me calling it the est set, and some of you even suggested that the name est set doesn't exist at all. Well, Duden seems to think it exists. Est set and Schafer's S are the two most common names for this letter, and you can use whichever one you prefer. Est set is the one that I learned, so it's the one that I use. But this does not mean that the correct substitution for this letter is SZ. There is an argument for it to be so, but it's an argument that the Brothers Grimm lost in the 19th century. The convention almost universally followed is that if you need to substitute the est set, it is always double S. Some of you argue that the est set changes the pronunciation of the word, as in massen and maßen. But it's actually the other way around. The current rules are that the est set is written after a long vowel or a diphthong, but not after a short vowel. It doesn't change the pronunciation. The pronunciation dictates which spelling to use. That rule doesn't always hold true for names of people or places. These examples all violate the rule. Not only that, but the rule as it now is was implemented as recently as 1996, which is why you still sometimes see the same word being spelled in different ways. In this case, the white sign was put up before the spelling reform and hasn't yet been replaced. And until very recently, the rule was that if you wanted to write in all capitals, you had to write a double S whether you wanted to or not. Not, because the est set was only a lowercase letter. These are all real-life examples of exactly that. There is now a capital est set, but its use is optional. You can use it if you want to, but you don't have to. And this is just as well, because the font that I usually use in my videos doesn't have it. I have to switch to a different font to demonstrate it. 
What you should not do, of course, is to write something in capital letters but with a lowercase s set. There are two ways of writing this sign correctly, but this is the wrong way. And of course, in Switzerland and Liechtenstein, the s set isn't used at all. There, they always write a double s. They don't have any issues with this sentence, which is usually used to demonstrate how important the s set is, because it's an artificially contrived sentence that nobody would ever actually use in real life. In fact, other spelling rules are different as well. Wikipedia gives an example of a street name that would be written like this in Germany, but like this in Switzerland. It's good to have agreed spelling rules, but written language should be our servant, not the other way around. So if you can easily write umlauts in the est set, then write them. If not, then substitute them. It's fine. You are allowed to do that. Est set. Yeah, that the umlaut that the est set are always right. The uh, nah. Well, if you expect people to remember to uh, memorize, oh god. But the rule was. Uh,